Good morning and welcome to Trail Grazers. I don't know about where you live, but where we are, the pollen counts are astronomical and um, my eyes water all the time. So let me just assure you that I am not crying, but if you see my eyes water as if I'm crying, just know it's the dang pollen that's everywhere. Jim and I worked out in the yard early this morning and um, some things have gotten to me. If you watched last week's video where we reported on our trip down to Lake Powell to be with John and Cindy, you may have noticed that Cindy, when she was explaining about the food, held up a jar of freeze-dried fruit that they use for snacks. We have done um, fruit for freeze-dried snacks as well. We bought some bags of um, at Costco of frozen bananas and strawberries. And we just weren't too fond of them. But that mixture that Cindy had was delicious. And so we're going to replicate that because we want some good nutritious snacks while we're on the road, as well as attempting to meet our daily intake requirement for fruit. There is nothing easier to freeze dry than pre-frozen foods. And this is the brand that Cindy used. It is called Wawona and we bought this at Costco. Um, the combination is peaches, mango, strawberries, and pineapple. No extra sugar added, and so that is just great. I have our four trays set out here, and I'm gonna put about half in each tray. I have our freeze dryer out there pre-freezing, so we'll be able to, when we get these set up, go right out there and put them in. All right, now what we want to do is evenly distribute things, break them up a little bit. With these strawberries, they're too thick. I want to cut these in half. I'm going to cut these in half. I don't want big lumps of fruit. Need to put some more over here. Cindy gave me a heads up about the strawberries. She had cut hers in quarters. This is just about right for four trays. Breaking up these big conglomerates here of fruit. That is the only downside with this mixture is having to cut the strawberries. But better that than have them hold up the show with taking longer to dehydrate and maybe not dehydrating all the way through. Dehydrate or freeze dry? Refreeze dry, freeze dry. All right, our freeze dryer will be ready for these to go in in about 15 minutes. I'm going to let the strawberries soften just a little bit, and then I'm going to go through and cut all of the strawberries in quarters. Then I have cut the strawberries in half, not in quarters. Most of the strawberries, at least in these two bags, were just medium to small size, so cutting them in half was just fine. We are ready to take these out to the freeze dryer, so come on out to the Kelvin Lab with us, and let's get this fruit going. Here we are in the Kelvin lab. This is a jar of the bananas and strawberries that we freeze dried in March of 21. So that's two years ago. So we really need to eat these and they're okay. They're just not my favorite. But these were delicious. So let's get them going.
All right, we have to close the drain valve, which is right back here. And I always check our water bucket to make sure there's no water in it so when that vacuum goes that does not suck up the defrosted water from the previous batch. So we're good to go. So I'm going to go back up to the screen and touch continue. And it is now freezing. This will probably take two days at least. But we will be back when these are done. Good morning, and it is 39 hours later. That's how long it took this batch to finish. So we are ready to put it in the jars and get it out to our food bank. But first I want to show you a new gadget that we have. Um, I have watched a lot of when I was a beginner with freeze drying, uh, YouTube, a YouTube channel called Retired at 40. This guy does a ton of videos on freeze drying and he's really good. I highly recommend his channel. And uh, one of the gadgets that he uses and that we now have is this uh, moisture detector. Now it's not made for food. It will do buildings or wood. And so we put it on wood because wood is a plant and it works just fine. But let me show you how this works. And so I have a sweet potato right here. I can turn it on and then just stick the pins and it goes up to what the, well, I, it goes off. I, you have to be quick, so I'm gonna do it again. Okay. So the highest, can you see that? Yeah, it's 50%. Oh, anyway, it measured 50%. 50%. We've done it 10 times today. It's a new gadget for us, so we're still kind of learning it. Now, it will measure um, moisture at 5% or above. And so when we put it onto our fruit here to measure the moisture level, it can't pick up any moisture. It's not measuring anything. Not picking up on anything. So our moisture level is below 5% and that is excellent. When we freeze dry foods and then store them, we want the moisture level to be below 10% to eliminate the possibility that botulism can grow. And of course, botulism won't grow in fruit because it's high acid anyway, so we are good to go. But uh, we need some more practice with that gadget. We will show it to you a time or two again as we go forward. So these turned out fantastic, absolutely fantastic. They are delicious. And um, I cannot taste one today because yesterday I had some oral surgery and I'm on baby food for a couple of days. But Jim has tasted these and they are wonderful. So I'm also gonna try a trick, a um, hack that one of our viewers suggested and that is that instead of trying to do things by the um, scoops that we just pour it into a, can a bag. He had a fancy way of doing it in a vacuum sealing bag. I am just going to do it in a regular grocery bag. We'll see how it works, maybe a lot quicker. And so I have, I have it in here and I'm gonna cut the corner off. And then I'm going to put that corner right here and see if we can just dump. So it needs more cutting. I think this is not going to work. He gave us that idea for our hamburger. And I think it would have worked fantastic for hamburger. But where we have these different size pieces, it's not gonna go through. In fact, maybe just my hand is gonna be the quickest way to do this because they are not going freely through that funnel either. So this is working okay. Okay. 
So we'll fill these jars and then be back when we are ready to vacuum seal them. We have two two-quart jars filled with this lovely fruit and a little bit for snacking. So here's a peach, pineapple, strawberry, and mango. And they are all delicious. And I can attest to that because I had some down on John and Cindy's houseboat. And Jim has tested them today. So these are wonderful. We're really happy to have these. So I'm going to go ahead and vacuum seal these. And remember the reason why we put the fruit in two quart jars and then put them out in our what we call our food bank is so that we have all the versatility in the world. With, with this large deposit in our bank, we can break the seal on the vacuum, pour it into smaller containers, and then if we haven't used all of this, then we can re-vacuum seal it. And that's a, such a great way without any additional cost except a little bit of power it takes to run the vacuum sealer again. But we might want to seal up some of this in mylar if we're going to be taking it on our four-wheelers. We might just put it, if we're on a road trip and eating meals along the way, we might want to put it in some plastic bags or a plastic container. And the great thing is we don't have to use refrigeration space and it's not like the fruit will spoil as we bounce along the road. So this is just an excellent way to preserve fruit and to get our actual daily supply of fruit from these lovely fruit snacks. So here we go and let's just go ahead and seal this. <clears throat> Here they are, vacuum sealed and ready to go out into the Kelvin lab where we keep our freeze dried foods. So this was a very simple procedure. It took very little of our time. Most of the time, the 39 hours was spent inside the freeze dryer getting this ready to go. So thank you so much for being with us. This will be a great trail treat and we hope to see you out there on the trail.